Hello everyone, my name is Remy, I'm a product manager at Hopin, and today I would like to talk to you about how to keep focus during a, a period of hypergrowth in your company. So I've been a product manager for five years now in different type of company, uh, in B2B startups, but also SaaS startups at different stages of maturity. So I've been in, in, in small startup um, post Terry A, and, uh, and more like scale-up uh, startups that have grown to more than 1,000 employees, both European and American companies. And this gave me the opportunity to see different stages of hypergrowth and really have um, the ability to uh, see like the different choices you could take at those different stages of growth. And, uh, and especially in the last two experiences I had, so the first one being uh, hoping the company where I'm, I'm at the moment, um, this company is um, basically what we do is a shared experience company. We have a different type of technology for vir virtual hybrid or on-site uh, events. We are funded in 2019 and we grew to more than 1000 employees uh, in 47 countries. And each month, millions of people use our platform to join events. Um, and here, especially, I would like to, to discuss uh, the event of COVID and how it impacted our growth. It definitely accelerated the wide scale adoption of virtual and hybrid uh, events among the industry. And same with Mano Mano Pro. So Mano Mano Pro is a B2B construction material um, e-commerce. Uh, it's a marketplace with 5 million product catalog for construction professional. It was launched uh, in 2019 and it went also in 24 months from zero to 100 uh, million euros uh, annual um, um, revenue. And same in the in the early COVID, when I was still at part of Mano Mano Pro, uh, we saw that uh, the, the 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 false closure of forced um, the tradi traditional resellers to 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 close. So B two B construction companies had to uh, rush online to be able to to buy, and so it uh, it really created a hyper growth environment where it's hard uh, to to keep focus. So the agenda is in two two stages. The first one is how can rapid growth create a defocus from a product perspective and what strategies, uh, some tips to put in place to, to keep your focus during this period of growth. So first I would like to start with uh, the product market fit. So usually when growth starts, this is uh, the phase that your company is at. Um, uh, Mark Anderson, a fam famous uh, venture capitalist, uh, defined it by um, the customers are buying the product just as fast as you can make it. The usage is going super fast uh, and the money for customers is piling up in your company checking account. You're hiring sales and customer support as fast as you can. Usually you're also raising money pretty fast. And um, and usually that and that's what happened to Hopin. So uh, post launch uh, in 2020, the company raised uh, several rounds, grew to more than 1000 employees and, uh, and grew to have more than uh, a few millions of uh, people attending all, all the events. So growth can make your market basically become huge and, and you have a lot of product um, opportunities. It can also like, uh, such as COVID, it, could, it can also accelerate the transformation of markets. And suddenly you, your product doesn't have fit just, just with one market, but you start to receiving usage and, 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 and product requests from different part of, um, of different market types, different type of customers. And uh, that's what uh, is very exciting during growth is like you, you, you stretch this product market fit and you try to enter new markets. And that's where it's uh, become very interesting as a product manager because you have more and more product opportunities. And usually what the business team, so marketing, the funders, the sales, usually what they expect the product to do is to be able to tap into all those potentials, right? To be able to grab all the potential of, of those different markets. And they will just ask for more and more and more and be able for, for the features of the product to um, match different uh, opportunities. So for instance, at Mano Mano, it could have been like uh, being able to match both uh, the construction companies in painting, but also in, uh, in carpentry and, and be able to have a, uh, an e-commerce website that would match both those different categories. Uh, for a company like Hopin, it's more, we would face different types of events, uh, music concerts, uh, conferences, uh, internal events. And obviously the, 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 the temptation is to try to attend all those markets and to grab as much uh, revenue as you can. But basically if you give in as a, as a product team, as a, as an engineering team, 
you will most likely just look like something like this. So clearly you can see I'm not a designer. What I want to show here is just that uh, the little dots are basically features. And if you don't drive a, a strong focus uh, strategy, most probably you're gonna try to enter different markets and project some features in some markets without really have any more a strong product market fit. And you're gonna stretch your, your product in so many directions that um, uh, in the end you will not really make a make it uh, in any of those markets. So those little diagrams are, are nice to watch, but basically, how do you know if your team has lost focus um, uh, as a PM? Uh, so this has different, um, you have different ways of noticing this. The, the, the one I noticed most is basically to ask yourself, what is your team mission? It's put in simply, it's like, uh, what, is, what am I here to do? Uh, what, what, what is the team supposed to achieve in a year? How does that serve the, the company? And, uh, and for instance, uh, in, um, in Mano Mano Pro, my team was, uh, had a scope about around loyalty and trying to achieve people to uh, repeat more on the platform. And at some point when the growth was uh, exponential, suddenly the, I could not relate to the objective of the company and my team was very um, defocused in the sense that we were doing a lot of um, uh, work that was not really part of our, of our roadmap. And that's also another indicator is when you look at the past work you've done in the recent months, you need to try to be able to be honest with yourself and understand how much of this was part of a, of a plan, uh, for part of objectives and how much was just being opportunistic. Uh, if I go back here a little bit, like going to those low hanging fruits are they often called by, uh, by leadership and trying to just stretch your product in different direction. And so if you realize that in the past months, uh, more than 50% of your work was those kind of high level requests or, or last minute unprioritized work, it might mean that your team has lost focus. Um, and that's something that you will see as well in your day to day with your engineering team, uh, because they are most likely constantly switching context, which means that they are uh, defocused by um, um, like in the middle of a sprint, you would add new tickets uh, in the middle of a of a big project, you pause this project to, to start another one. Um, they would have a lot of um, bugs coming up from uh, from different parts of the company without you being able to really push back on the bugs because your order of priorities are not clear anymore. Um, and that's something that obviously end up in your product and the product and tech depth are high. Uh, so it means that your features that are existed, uh, that exist already do not meet the quality requirements. So you have a a lot of MVPs out there and they always remain uh, barely viable. Uh, you really don't uh, work uh, and iterate on your features um, and, 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 and your features actually don't serve as a way to really drive a strategy and, 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 and iterate and make them better to, to enter a market. They are just um, checking boxes, checking a, a feature a delivery kind of uh, boxes. And, and, and that's often uh, what is can be seen as a build trap, the feature factory. I think that all those uh, kind of concepts are very interesting uh, for you to look at in these, um, in these situations. Uh, but I'm not going to just uh, quote uh, this, um, uh, this book, but also like just give you concrete tip about how to approach this uh, as a senior PM, how to work uh, towards getting your team more focused um, and what can you do? First of all, I think it's important to understand what is your responsibility as a product manager. Uh, oftentimes, as, as an IC product manager, you are dependent from prioritization and, and, and strategy, which is drafted at a higher level than you in the, in the company, obviously. You are often in a startup that has a, a CEO or a founders um, that have a, a strong idea about where the company as a whole is heading. Uh, and that is uh, what you usually would call the company vision or a company mission. And that's really something that the, the C levels and the CEO owns. And driving from that, you will usually have um, um, product leadership. So either like either as a CEO, if it's a small startup or, or VP of product or head of product uh, that is in charge of um, linking uh, the state of the current product to this company vision to project what is usually called the product vision. So it's saying like, okay, if we want to achieve this company vision, that's what the product should head towards. Um, and then as a, as a, as a group or senior PM, you're usually just in charge of 
understanding what your sub product or, or the scope of your team uh, is, um, is 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 going to participate to this product vision, right? So, how am I able to 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 deliver on the on the few um, features or scope that I own and make sure that uh, they're heading towards uh, the product vision? So that's something that is very important to understand is that um, if your company mission or the product uh, vision are, are vague, uh, it doesn't help you to, to stay focused and to say no with confidence. So it's very important as a, as a, as an ICPM, as a senior PM to always challenge uh, those visions. You're not here to write them. You're not here to, to imagine them, uh, but you definitely need them to be concrete and need them to be, um, useful and, uh, and and be able to leverage them for you to drive your own uh, strategy. So if in your company during this phase of hyper growth, suddenly the, the narrative is not clear enough, it's your responsibility to go and, and get closer to leadership to ask uh, for clarification, to ask and express the fact that what is existing is not enough for you to do your 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 job in a, in a, in a clear and, and focused way. Um, Something that's important as well, and I'm going to touch uh, based on, on this just afterwards, is uh, it's also your work, uh, your job as an IC to connect with other teams, such as marketing and research teams, to make sense of the market opportunities. So as a PM, you're going to receive those feature requests uh, on a daily basis from different persons, sales um, and sales engineer or, or marketing teams. And it's very important to force or at least ask uh, people to try to take a step back and, 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 and keep tab of those opportunities in a structured way. So for instance, if I go back to my Mano Mano, um, example, um, it was very important for, for us to, it was an e-commerce website. So sometimes we didn't know what was the specialty of the, of the customers, but, um, that's something that we quickly enabled because by being able to know how many, uh, carpenters or painters were able to. Uh, use our platform and, and, and crossing those company numbers with publicly available data, we were able to understand the different markets we were facing, like big uh, companies, small companies, um, um, Paris based, like uh, city based, or uh, more countryside based, which is very important in e-commerce, all those different of, of grouping of market that gives you a better understanding on, on which one you want to uh, prioritize. And this is what gives you those two things. So a high level mission that you can understand, um, a, a more concrete market knowledge that gives you the ability for, for you and your team to understand your mission statement. And, uh, and this will definitely help you to see, uh, where to bring your team and, and, and what, um, what needs and what, uh, requests you, you will need to, to prioritize. So going back to my little dots and, and, and bubble. Basically, as a PM, that's what you're facing. You, you don't have the nice uh, round market like I, I showed earlier. You're just uh, here leading a product. You have some insights, some, some, some feedback coming in, some requests, and, uh, and you need to prioritize. You need to make sense of all those requests. And to be able to work towards this and be able to categorize those research, those requests is something that takes time, a lot of time. And that's where you should focus as, as a PM, uh, not in project management, not in doing specifications, but in trying to make sense of your product market fit and trying to make sense of uh, the different characteristics of the market out there. And, uh, and how to do this concretely is really just making sure that every time a company is asking for something, you're able to enrich this company data with more parameters that allows you to recognize what market they belong to. Uh, and so for instance, I'd hope for us, it would be, um, the event type, the intent. Uh, so do they want to run an event that is more internal or that is more like a, a carry fair to recruit people and, um, and, and do they intend to do this on a weekly basis on a, on a monthly basis, or is this a one-off event that they, they run once in the year, like a big one. Uh, number of attendees, like all, all these kind of parameters will help uh, uh, you and, 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 the, and the research and marketing team to be able to identify those markets. And that's, that's primordial because then obviously at some point you will be able to um, judge the, the interest of each of those markets compared to your product and to be able to understand that 
some requests comes mostly from one market and, and, and others come from another type of market. And what's very important is that this shouldn't have just happen at your level, because otherwise you could prioritize market A and, and, and another group in the company, another group of, of, of squads will pre prioritize another market, which is important is like for this to happen at a, at a company level or at a product level. And, um, and for all those product teams to be aligned and, and, and with the leadership to prioritize the market for, for, for you. And this is, this is really important is how do you force the company to go to this prioritization. It's basically by saying no as a PM. It's just by being clear and being able to say, this is impossible to build this. I'm not going to build a feature here, a feature there, a feature there. You, you need to know and be able to recognize when your team is not focused and say no to the, the features that defocus your team. And and by asking your, your leadership to take the hard decision and to be able to bring you a clear market focus and a clear uh, strategy, business strategy to enter a certain market or not, you will be able as a PM to say no much clearer. And, and that's what I wrote in this slide is you'll be able to make your focus very explicit, both to the, the go-to-market teams. No, we won't build this feature here because it doesn't serve the markets we're trying to break into. And also to your dev team, which will find a, a much higher uh, alignment and focus by telling them, this is why these bugs are, are, are not treated right now. We are not prioritizing them. So they're they are like more like a P2 or P3 uh, because they don't belong to the use cases that will fit the market we're trying to break into. Um, and, 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 and little by little, if you were able to focus and head towards uh, this direction, uh, 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 a strategic direction where you know that you chose not to address some market, but chose to address other markets, you will little by little uh, be able to extend your product market fit towards those markets and be the leader in those two markets. And that's something that's very interesting and, 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 and that is happening right now with, uh, with hoping. And, and when you start to become the leader in a, in a vertical, in a, in a type of market, uh, that's where hyper growth can be really sustainable and, and long term. Um, so that's a bit the wrap up of, um, of this little experience sharing. Um, it's basically how in, in a few words, how to go from an initial product market fit, uh, that might be disrupted by higher growth because you will either have a changing markets to confront to, or your, your, your company will be exposed to new markets. Um, that you might want to be um, uh, entering into. But um, the very important thing to be able for this growth to not just be one-off and kind of opportunistic is for at some point the product um, teams and, 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 and culture to switch to um, a more focused attention and be able to um, really choose your battles and be able to prioritize uh, the markets internally and for this to be aligned from the product vision to the company mission down to your own team as a PM. And that's why like most of the slides I ever write, um, always start with always the same company mission, the same product vision it might be very boring for people that see this every week, but, uh, it's a way to really always make sure that, um, we are heading towards the same direction. Um, so that's it. I hope that was useful and, um, I hope to see you soon in the product school.